Welcome everyone to Budapest and day one coverage of week five on the ISU Junior Grand Prix. I'm your host, Ted Barton, and my friend and colleague, Mark Handrady, will be joining me from his home in Nottingham. We are here at the Vasis Ice Hall on the Pesh side of the Danube, with Buda being on the other side of the river, thus Budapest. It is a fascinating and beautiful city. Up next, the pairs short program with 14 teams from 12 nations. Now, there have been some exciting new teams this year fighting for the rights to compete at the Junior Grand Prix Final in Beijing in early December. So let's get started. The pairs short program begins right now. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Budapest, Hungary. Day one of competition pairs short program coming up just in a few moments as we fly over the facility here hosting the Junior Grand Prix, number five on the series this year. You can see a beautiful day as we take a look inside the arena. I'm joined by Mark Hanready from the UK in Nottingham. Mark, pairs are up next. Pairs are up and the I think the biggest pairs competition that we've seen is we have a look at the judges. So many different nations represented on the judging panel as well and good to see so many, relatively, so many teams here too. As we take a look at the technical panel for this event, and it was interesting, I was just uh, speaking with Dan, and uh, we talked about the skaters not getting their, their skates. Some of the judges didn't get their clothes, so. They, oh, no. And this is a cold rink, so people were lending boots and coats and this and that. So, oh, you brilliant. know, all the skaters from, and I suppose the officials from Estonia and from Finland did not receive their luggage, and so that's why we've had those uh, teams uh, switching skates, buying a new pair of skates, uh, skating someone else's skates. Yeah, it's been a little bit chaotic, but it also impacted the officials as well. And that is, those are the, the stories that last forever. You know, I was, as you know, I've reached out to certain skaters and if they give stories, they're always stories like that. They're the starting lineup for this group. But, you know, that's the kind of stuff that people remember forever. And I love that. Oh yeah, they may not like it at the moment, but it's a good story down the road. So you know, yeah. you can bank that one in, right? And tell it during dinner or whatever the case may be. As we take a look at the winners in week number two from Canada, Martina Ariona Kent and Charlie Le Liberté Laurent. Brand new team just joining about five months ago and they just have a pair pedigree. And when they got together, it just started to come together very, very quickly. And of course, they didn't have any expectations coming into Linz and took that title. But here, I don't know. Do they bring expectations in? Do they just keep that, uh, Yeah. you know, just keep the, the head space? Well, just gonna do the best we can. We're still sort of a new team. And they look just there in the transition leading into the double axles. They already look closer. They already look more refined. I suppose when the teams are new, as these are, then their improvement rate is likely to be more visible in just a few short weeks. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're going to be looking at seven elements in the short program in pairs. We're going to see a twist element. That's where the gentleman has the uh, woman by the waist and throws her up, and she twists above him, hopefully. <laughs> and then side-by-side <laughs> side side solo jumps. You'll see double lutzes mostly. Um, and a group three lift. Uh, that's a hand-to-hip lift, takeoff. Uh, you'll see a throw jump. Uh, and you'll see a change combination spin that'll be side-by-side -side spins. You'll see them spinning side-by-side. -side. The hard part of that is doing the spin itself is not that difficult, but doing the spin in unison together is virtually impossible to get the whole spin uh, together in perfect unison. Then you'll see a desk bar for an inside desk bar for them and a step sequence uh, as well. Those are your seven elements. And it's going to be interesting in this event, Ted, because we do have... We, I feel like since I've joined you in the Junior Grand Prix, you're really mindful of almost a new uh, phase, new chapter, new series, new season in the Paris disciplines and these upcoming teams that are the future. This competition, we have Metalkina Berlava from Georgia returning. They were in Istanbul, and they obviously so seasoned, so experienced. The Ukraine team, Sierra Kopta, also so experienced, and then we have the, the newer teams of likes of Ariano Kent and the Liberté Laurent. So it's going to be interesting to see how throw them all together and put them in the mix to see how the cookie crumbles. Yeah, 14 teams on the Junior Grand Prix in any one of the events is, you know, quite a stacked group because generally speaking, we'll have maybe 10, you know, anywhere from nine till 11 or 12, but 14 teams, I think, is about the largest I've seen in the last couple of years. So really, 
pleased to see 14 teams here in Budapest. And we've talked about, it was interesting to hear from some coaches just establishing that whilst the Pierce discipline is obviously very challenging, and there are challenges with all the disciplines, but this one perhaps more, but great to have it recognized and vocalized that yes, there are challenges, but there are opportunities perhaps in pairs that are less teams, there is less representation. So opportunity to represent your nation on an international stage and get all the, the kudos and the life experience that that brings. Yeah, as we saw that pick up on the hand to hip lift, that's a group three. There are five groups of lifts and this is the compulsory group three lift, hand to hip. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting to see this discipline, if you're wanting to represent your country internationally, this discipline in one way is the easiest route to doing that and another way it's the hardest route to doing that because this is such a hard discipline and not everyone's cut out to be thrown across the ice to be sitting on uh, a man's hand at the top of the uh, top of a lift where he's going you know 17 kilometers an hour with his knives on his feet which is what you say um, <laughs> and, and uh, you know not everyone's cut out to do that so you know it's hard to find those people that find this a thrill most people find it yeah. uh, as t terror, you know, or as fear, but some find it as a thrill. When you find those people, they're cut out for this discipline, and, and uh, it's so nice to see 14 couples here. <laughs> and just there seeing the smile on Martina Ariano Kent's face suggests you know, she, she's found her niche, and for some it really is that niche discipline. Oh, that's good. I was speaking to Menel Desmou, uh, not uh, Menel Perron, pardon me, um, national team um, team leader and all that, and coach of Joanie Rochette, uh, bronze medalist at the Winter Olympic Games in 2010, and she's here as the team leader, and she was telling me when she saw this young woman who was a star skater. Now, a star skater is a recreational skater. It's not a competitive skater. So Martina was just a star skating program, having a good time. She says, oh, my gosh, you remind me of one of my students. And I don't know how the transition was, but you got her involved. And here she is, a champion in, wow. in a very first Junior Grand Prix event. Here we go. Pair short program starts right now. Second event. We have the women's short program coming up after this. First team represents France. Louise Erhard and Matthias Pellegrini, both 19 years old. Second Junior Grand Prix season. Second event. They were fourth in Istanbul. And they were 12th at the World Juniors last year in Calgary. 47.83, season's best. We want to beat that right now.
Louise Erhard and Mathieu Pellery, the two 19-year-olds from France. And great to see this team developing in their strength and their confidence. Remember, they had that surgery. Mati had that surgery in June, so they missed a month of their training time and their off-season prep. Looking like they are showcasing that time that they've made since their first event in Istanbul a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, other than the double axle, that was a pretty solid program. I think much better. We'll see how this stacks up with their season's best. It'll be pretty close. But really nice little triple loop. Let's take a look here. There's the triple twist in at level one. Watch here, Matthias just pops his axle, opens it up right there. And so now you just get the value of a single axle, which is not the requirement. So they get zero for that. And here we have this again. I must have pushed the button again. Got to replace this replay guy. <laughs> Isn't it interesting you see the look from partner to partner? Louise was not even landed and she knew what had happened from Matthias. Yeah. Watch, so watch this team. throw triple loop. This is a beauty. He gets out of the way, passes her through, right on top of that landing ankle and glides out. Nicely done. Great fight on her part to hold that up. There's the group three. The group three left. And this is in at level four, so all four features are cheap. Weather plus. 0.73, so nice score for that one element. Ford inside Despo watches back pick, ankles right there. And there is one revolution and two revolutions. So that comes in level three, so it gets a difficult entry plus the two revolutions. And that's three out of the four difficult features for that element. And I, I suppose that the axle will obviously be costly, the split twist at the beginning, pretty negative grade of execution on that, but to me, immediately from the start of the program, choreography by Ice Dance coach Stanislas Etzel, you can see there are more run-throughs under their belt. The short program score is 45.82 for Louise Amatis from France, and the first team out in this event. Well, there is our next team, 15-year-old Deborah Ann, Anna Cohen and 20-year-old Luka Wojcicki from the Czech Republic. This is a new team this year in their very first Junior Grand Prix event. They're coached by Peter Bedar, former Czech pair skater. Excellent career for him. And they'll skate the short program to Backstage Romance from Moulin Rouge.
Deborah Anacorn and Lukas Brzozka from the Czech Republic. And Lukas, he competed last year with a different partner. He was ninth at the Junior Worlds uh, here with Deborah Anna and great debut on the Junior Grand Prix test. Yeah, no, a solid skate. I think we'll take a look at some of the elements. And you see they had some really good level on the flying combination spin at the end of the program. Level three on that group three lift. That was nice quality edges, turns by Luca. Really well done. Side by side double axles, right on. Here's the double twist, just in a level one, so not very high to get the split. And here's the double axles. Watch, take off at the same time, land at the same time. Good stretch, free leg, really nicely done there. Here's the throw double loop. Watch him get out of the way, pass her through. And that's where they're at. Nice, solid basics on that double loop. I'm sure that'll be triple soon. The hand on the hip, lifting primarily with that right hand, right in the left hip. And watch the change hand. She grabs the blade feature, and he'll change the hold. She'll change the position, feature, feature. And then the dismount. There it comes in at a level three, so missing one of the features on that. Forward inside desk bar, I'll watch him anchor it with that pick right there. And there's one. Doesn't get two, I don't think, so gets a level two on the entrance and one revolutions, one revolution. So there you go. They'll set their personal best and season's best here right now with a score. A good connection between the, the team here and as is always the case, I think, for any new budding partnership, it's the twist lift and the, the Group three left, they're the challenging element so unique to the pair's discipline and perhaps for Deborah Anna that the the learning ground that she's so steadily in. Yeah, there's gonna be some elements for sure that you're not comfortable with in the beginning and you don't really quite understand the mechanics until you do enough of them. And that's absolutely normal. Well we'll take a look at the short program scores. 43.95, and that will put Deborah Anna and Luca currently into second place. But good start, they got smiles on the face, they like that. They're happy with that skate, so they should be. And here are the champions from week number two on the Junior Grand Prix from Canada, Martina, Ariona, Kent, and Charlie, Le Liberté, Laurent, Martin 16, Charlie is 18. First Junior Grand Prix season, second event, as I said, they won in Linz with a 53.67 in the short program. They'll skate to, I'm gonna be 500 miles by the Proclaimers.
16-year-old Martina Ariano Kent and 18-year-old Charlie La Liberté Laurent. As you said, Ted winners at the first event. Some more challenges. The split twist was challenging at the start of the program as the Canadian flag is proud the wave to support them. Yeah, and no question. I think Martino is both Martina and Charlie just a little bit tight. They didn't. They, you know, when they when I did an interview with them after their win, they said we just skated. We had nothing to lose. We just came out and skated what we could do. And I think now having that first place, thinking, oh, we want to make the final, that had to creep into their mind just a little bit. And there's a twist. No, no split on that, and touching on the way down, stepping out. So just a level one on that triple twist. Don't lock, so they were sublime. Takes off at the same time, lands same time. Great stretch, beautiful. Nice positive Thanks. GOE in that. Yeah, it makes you wonder how much their technique was the same as you look at the Group D lift. To be so well matched on that element, they must have had similar tuition, despite the fact they're a new team. Yeah, and this level three, or level four Group 3 lift comes in with plus GOE as well. Here's the throw. Let's see what happens on the landing here. Look good in the air. Just Ugh. checks out maybe a little bit too early. Board inside Death Spiral. This is in level three, so difficult entry. There's the pick, the anchor, and that's one. And two revolutions, there's your level three. So should be disappointed, but this is a good team. They have to go through this expectation thing. Like, okay, no pressure in the first, in week one, and then all of a sudden, now you're you know, trying to get in the final, and that whole thought process, no matter how much you try to ignore it, is always in the back of your head. And so how do you manage that? Well, lesson will be able to learn here a little bit. And this is a really wonderful young team, and we'll have a very bright future, but lessons need to be learned. And perhaps, at least in the short here, that might be one of them, we'll see. Well, 49.90, that is first in the short program so far, with, even with that big call, so that just shows you the quality. But nevertheless, that doesn't mean much for her and for Charlie. A little upset, they want to skate better, and they will in the free. Team Mark comes from Great Britain. Yep, and having seen the team training, I can give some backstory. We see the Ukrainian team who have so much experience, who've seen medal on the Junior Grand Prix, doing their warm up side by side, looking well matched. <laughs> and then the British team who have been coaching as they've been trying to train and is coaching on in a, in a rink that's so busy with youngsters and much lower level skaters and so it's I've actually seen the challenges of some of the pair teams really firsthand and I have so much admiration for them in trying to compete internationally when they come from a nation that's not our training environment as well that's not conducive to the prime time ice time that I feel pairs would ideally benefit from they are trying to go into split twist with you know Skaters doing single flip behind them, emerging from the barrier, you know, very recreational. And so it confirms that you know, skaters come into this Junior Grand Prix from completely different experiences. Yeah, no question. This discipline, I think probably more than the other disciplines, really requires a little bit more space, uh, just from a safety perspective, of course. And if you don't have enough teams that pay for the ice, then you've got to go on the ice with whoever else is there, and that obviously becomes problematic. Yeah, and I mean that's not that's no discredit to those that are sharing the ice with them. It's just no. it's an expensive sport and it's a challenge to, to to get the ice time. And so there were times when it was it was weird for me in this experience. There were times when I would be coaching and I'd be teaching somebody who was doing whatever they were doing, and maybe they were in a program, and then the peer team were coming up to apologize to me because they maybe got in the way and in my head I'm thinking, well that's very polite and very respectful of you and I totally hear you but I feel for you because 
I'm sorry that we got that you had to move out of the way, yeah. you know, for that yeah. athlete because you know you've got aspirations of trying to compete with the likes of this team, who I don't know their environment well, or their situation, but the, they could go that fast. The, the business model is these ice rinks around the world, uh, particularly in the United States. They brought private facilities. They want to make money, so the number of bodies on the ice rink are important for them to how much they make. And uh, they, I used to skate in the states in pairs actually with on a public session, and you had to figure out what yeah. to do and where to go and you know what to work on. So, you know, it depends on where you're at. And being at a pair school, of course, helps you a lot because you'll have pair ice, but that's not too many of those around the globe. And nor you know, is it financially viable. And that's kind of that that then makes the the work of the coaches who facilitate the creation of these teams, who want to support these youngsters in the pursuit of, as I said in the last moment group, I think, the opportunity that pairs provides, you then think, well, total admiration to those coaches because they're having to work so hard to, to fuel that new dream and give that vision when they're not in an environment that, as I say, is conducive. There's the Australian team, the Australian team who, you know, we saw Christoph last week competing in Osaka, Japan, in the singles competition here, now in the pairs, you know, such different environments coming in. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, some of the stories. But that's what sport, or the passion for sport does. It makes you do things that ordinary people wouldn't do um, to pursue a love. Yeah. And, you know, I, I say the challenges of it. You know, I'm, I'm lamenting the challenges that some of the pairs teams face. But equally, on the flip side of that, then you've got skaters out representing the country on an international event. You're traveling to this, you know, I'm not there, but I gather Budapest is an amazing city. Yes. And they're in a beautiful rink, and yeah. they're skating with some, and like, you know, they're going to be with the former junior world champions. The Georgian boys won the junior world title before, so they wouldn't get that at home. Yeah. And now they've, they've pushed themselves to go through the challenges of training at home. This is the reward. You know, this might feel like a test, but in some respects, this is the reward of that challenge that you've endured to get to this. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, as we mentioned a little earlier, I think during the men's event, whether you're here for your first time, just gaining experience, or whether you're here trying to make junior Grand Prix final points, there's still much to be gained by being here. And, um, and particularly in this discipline, because there's a lot of these teams don't train with enough other teams. so. For them to see all these other teams, 13 other teams, that they don't get to train with. I'm sure the team in Great Britain skates by themselves, maybe? Is there another team? I'm not sure. Yeah, no, no. There's, there's another team in a different, in Scotland. They yeah. train in the middle of England, so you know, they don't get to train alongside any other teams in during what they're doing. Indeed, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Well, so this is a bonus, getting to see these other teams compete and practice. Yeah, c completely. And, and then. So then that gives them that kind of different perspective, whereas Violeta Sierva from the Ukraine now working the double loose, they competed at the Junior Grand Prix final in Torino last year. So they are now coming in this year with such a different perspective and that has the pitfalls and challenges of that as well. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed the, I don't know where you guys got this in Europe, but the covers over the player's bench. Um, so you have that over the judges, there's this like roof. <laughs> going. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Are the fans that unruly? <laughs> They're throwing that <laughs> stuff on the on the players' bench. I'm going, wow. Those are the judges are in this little room type of thing. We don't see oh, that the, the yeah. Inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it Niemi Davison? Ne Neve. Neve? Neve. It's a, Neve. one of those. Wow. Yeah, Neve. One of these crazy. Yeah, spelling. Oh, okay, <laughs> good thing I asked. Okay, next up, <laughs> Great Britain, <laughs> Neve Davison and Shailish Collar. 19, 20 years old, second junior Grand Prix season, silver medalist of the British Nationals in junior. 25.66, the personal best so far in the short program running that last season. They'll skate to tightrope from the greatest showman.
Neve Davison and Shailish Collar from Great Britain, 19 years old and 20 years old respectively. And we talked about the challenges that they face training in an environment that's not necessarily conducive to the, the training of a pairs team. Not only have they had those impacts, they've also, Shailish had a stress fracture earlier this year. He's had a bulging disc in his back straight after that. So to see them then go out and skate, for them, clean skate, deserves that big hug from their coach, Emily Hayward. Well, she looked like she was delicate and enjoying every moment. Mm. Get the double lutz is done quite nicely. Here's that hoop three lift. Kind of a platter, both hands on the hips. Different direction rotational because that's his normal direction. And here's the throw double loop. This was nicely done. Moves him, passes her through. Nice. Solid, fast landing edge. Here's the port inside death spiral. This is in at a level two, so it gets two features. And she looks pretty happy with that experience. And you know, you set your different standards. You know, you may not be able to do everything like you'd like to by the end of the year. So you got to set your goals. <laughs> She's lots of personality this one, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's just fantastic. Such a joy to be in the yeah, rink. And she looks like it. There's. Yeah, Coach Emily, and they work with James and Vicky Black in Nottingham as well. But the t as I said, the team behind them has had, I can't say they've worked harder than other teams. All coaches work incredibly hard, but they've had to have that real support. They've had to be so much of a support network for this team because they don't rely on seeing anybody else in their training environment. And so then to see them come and now potentially add, you know, over 10 points to the scores that they had last year is such a big testament to those that have supported them. Yeah, absolutely, and I think you can see that they're loving this journey. They'd like to do more, of course, but we talked about this on every category. It's whether you have the resources, facilities, you know, opportunities that other countries do have, and in Paris skating, many Paris teams don't have them. But that was, the, I think, a good performance. She looked, you know, really wonderful throughout the whole program with the standard that they're at. Yeah, some gorgeous movements, and they also work with Neve's auntie, a coach called Kelly Budry, who works on flexibility and performance as well, and she's really enhanced that, and you can see within Neve that gorgeous, gorgeous movement patterns in her body as well, and so much, so much to admire, but also, obviously, so much still to develop oh, in terms sure. of the pairs elements, but like I said, they can't really train them as readily as maybe others can. So no, and Shalish did a great job in being the foundation of the lifts mm. and the twists and stuff like that. Men go unnoticed in pairs quite often. He did a wonderful job, 35.13, and that'll put them currently into fourth place. But that is almost 10 points more than what they had last year as their best. So mission accomplished, improvement made, more to come. Well, there is a look at our next team. And they represent Ukraine. 16-year-old Violeta Sirova and 20-year-old Ivan Hopta. Their best was Junior World last year, 58.47 in the short program. And they're going to skate to If I Can Dream.
15 year old Violetta Sierva and 20 year old Ivan Kupta. And Ted Violetta wanted me to acknowledge how thankful they were to the club in Chemnitz that they have been training in for already over a year. The situation at home in Kiev, Kiev is so difficult and they were just so keen to express their gratitude to the Chemnitz club that they have been training in. And I think wonderful for us to be able to give that opportunity to express that gratitude they have. Absolutely, and so many clubs and skaters and private citizens helping athletes from Ukraine around the world and we know we've had a number in Canada as well absorbed into our clubs so a you know, big shout out to all those people that continue to help these young athletes pursue their goals. Darn it, I wanted that. I, sh I want to show the split on that and I was talking. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the throw, double loop, eight height, just perfect position, everything. And that was planned as the throw double loop and here's the double lot. So this is the stage that they're at at this moment. <laughs> Group three lift here. There's the change of position. It's just a little bit shaky, just not sure yet. Maybe it's early in the season. But look at that difficult position. Change of hand to the other hip. Change of position for her. Wow, just amazing. Of course, that is a level four, most difficult. The highest level of difficulty with a 0 0.80. And the forward inside desk barrel is level two, so getting the two revolutions, I believe it was. And, you know, we have to assume they've got so many qualities. We have to assume that they're really conscientious to training the side by side double axles, the throw triple loop. But you, I admire their elective decision to go for stuff that they can do. It's similar content to what, sh what they used at Junior Worlds last year, where they found themselves in fourth in the short program, third overall. So not yet ready to push the technical content, but I'm sure it's something they're working hard on in Chemnitz. Well, the mechanics of all those elements, clearly foundation is there to push it to a more difficult level, but they'll do that in time. First thing is safety. And if you're yeah. not comfortable, you're not gonna do it well. You have to get comfort zone and that usually becomes feeling, okay, I feel pretty safe with this, let's go for the trip. The trip program scores for Violeta Sirova and Ivan Hopta from Ukraine, 55.52. And that'll put them currently in the first place at this stage in the competition. And there is a look at our next team who represent Australia, 14-year-old Peyton Bellamy Martins and 15-year-old Christoph Prado. Coached by Liz Kane. And they have, do not have a season's best or a personal best. This is the first time out on the Junior Grand Prix. New team here. And they'll skate to experience by Ayanaudi.
Well, this time last week, we were commentating upon Krzysztof Prado from Australia in the men's singles competition in Osaka, Japan. This week, he's here with his new partner. They teamed up in just April of this year, Peyton Bellamy Martins. And Ted, I was scared because they obviously will not have had as much training time. They're a very new team. Not much training time given Christoph's single skating commitment. So kudos to them both for getting through the short program here. Yeah, absolutely. Not easy at all. We'll see the twist here. Watch, there'll be no split. It's just base, so there's no split, no difficult entry. Two rotations out, touch the shoulder. So that's just a double twist base level. That's okay, that's where they are at. Here's the group three left. And right hand on the left hip. Up there, it's very smart because you can see him on his toe pick, so he's slowing down, step forward, changes the position, starts to lose a little bit of the balance. Our right arm starts to bend, and that lift's gotta come down safely, and he does. We've taught to do that, and that's very smart on Kriptov's part. Be safe. And here's the go of a loop, a little lift going into it. Moves himself on the pathway, beautifully done. And then we see here the double nuts. This was well done as well. Yeah, no problem. Report inside desk bar, this is a level two, so not going for the difficult entry. Could have maybe get, I don't know, see the hips drop down. One, yeah, I think it's just the entry and then one rotation. That's it. That's not a bad start. So he came all the way from Osaka. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And they competed in a domestic event as they're joined by Christoph's mom, Barbara, and coach Liz Kane. She was a world junior bronze medalist in 1976 in pairs. And they competed in a summer event, the Holland's Champ Series, and they had 20.8 there. So they're, you know, further on in, in their training development and looks like based on that score, this is gonna be improved. Yeah, it was so interesting watching coach and mom in the background while the skaters are skating, you know, doing the spin right in front yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if that. they were saying anything. We were okay. What did I hear? What the skaters uh, calling it? A <laughs> <laughs> good experience for this young team. Short program scores 26.22. That is six so far in the short program. are very early on. New team, new discipline perhaps. Still work to do in the singles discipline as well. So it takes a lot of time to develop into a top senior team. And that's what we're seeing. Even the top juniors here, yeah, their skating skills are a bit better and whatnot, but they're not at the level of seniors. You transfer into seniors quicker in, in women's and in men's and in dance perhaps, Paris always takes a little bit longer as we take a look at the standings so far after two groups. Okay, Mark, what's up on the video playback list? during the ice reserves. Well, we've already seen them compete here today, but seeing as we're watching the Paris competition, chance to look back at the winner's interview from Linz in Austria with the team lying currently in second place, Martina Ariano Kent and Charlie La Liberté Laurent, and then to the winners of the other Paris event, which we've seen, which was in Istanbul, and that will be with the Georgian champions, Metalkina and Berolava, who are yet to skate here. And the final video will be the day in the life of CDs with Roman Ponsar from Asaka last week. There you go. Hope you enjoy. We'll be back right after this. Here in Linz with the Paris champions, the Canadian team of Martina Ariana Kent and Charlie Le Liberté Laurent, both from Montreal. Boy, this has been a very interesting and quick year. Did you ever hope for or expect to win a gold medal in your first Junior Grand Prix? I was not expecting it at all. Like, I didn't think that we would get first, but we just did what we had to do, and then the outcome, oh, yeah. <laughs> the outcome, oh, yeah, I was okay. <laughs> what are you going to say, Jared? No, I just said, like, like it doesn't matter the, the medal, just we had, re like, really much, uh, like, we had a lot of fun, like, uh, yeah, this week.
Well, you, the team has come together so quickly. There's no question. And, and you, you're very special because when you come out of those throws, you check that leg out so quickly, and that's so important. You're such a strong lifter as well because he's all wonderful skills coming up. What are your goals for the season? At the end of the season, when you can get a break, what do you hope that you will have accomplished? Mm, well, hopefully we'll go to the Grand Prix final and maybe uh, Junior Worlds. And what about from an element perspective? Is there anything you want to improve on between now and then? Well, I think we want to work on the, the split on the twist to get it much bigger and much uh, better. Uh, and speed in yeah. general, yep. in our programs. Yeah, boy, she's, she's, she's got the list. There's no question. Look, what do you like most about your partner? Um, you better think quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I would say that he's really funny and he's he's very like he makes it really fun. So it's not just like work, work, work. work. It's also you make it fun too. So see, he gave you two thumbs up on the fun thing. Okay, what do you like most about your partner? Well, I really like the fact that she's always the one like like on point, and uh, I'm probably the one always late. And like, uh, yeah, that's what I like. You're the comedian and she's the boss. Is that it? Okay, well, that's a perfect team. There you go. Well, congratulations on the win. What is your next competition? Uh, it's um, Junior Grand Prix in uh, Budapest. Perfect. We'll be there watching and hoping the best for you. Congratulations on your first uh, gold medal. Hold that up. First gold medal on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. The champions here in the Paris event in Linz, Austria. From Canada. Anastasia, Luca, congratulations. Your first competition together and a triumphant win. How do you feel? Uh, we we very happy today. Uh, um, good. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably good. Very good. And so you've both had lots of success with your previous partners. How long have you been skating together as a couple? Uh, three months. Wow. We skate together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three months. Yeah. That's just incredible. So, so you've won convincingly here. What's your next competition on the Junior Grand Prix? Uh, next competition is uh, Budapest, Vengri. Well, we congratulate you for your brilliant skating here, and we wish you all the very best in two weeks' time in Budapest. Thank you. Message and he said, uh, I was just thinking you don't have a Swiss jacket, no way you go on the kiss and cry with the French one. <laughs> I like the watch around where. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Romain Ponsard. I'm a figure skating coach for France and Switzerland. And I'm here in Osaka and I wish I could go back to my junior world and get on the ice and do a programs. But I'm here as a coach now. It's my first season coaching and I really enjoy it and really excited to be here in Osaka. And we will uh, today uh, have the free program uh, run through uh, for my skaters and first time touching the ice here in Osaka. So we'll see how it goes. François, j'ai fait tomber le téléphone. <laughs> Merci. What I'm looking for on this kind of practice is first adapt to the ice ring because it's a new environment for the skaters. Also do the pattern of the program, to always to adapt of the size of the rink and the atmosphere of the rink. Always when you do a long travel like Japan, you arrive for, to the first practice and you feel like your stamina is so bad always. So it's important to have it running one first time. And after we went through all the jump, uh, one by one and on sections like in the program. And after that, we finish with a spin to show uh, all the level uh, to the controllers that are watching the practice. So now it was supposed to be lunch break, but he wanted to watch the practice of the men, so his competitor. So this is gonna be our lunch break from the skating lounge. 
and we are actually lucky because in Japan the food is really good so we will enjoy uh, the food and keep watching the practice of the men. <laughs> So here I have two different types of skater. I have Eugenia, that is her first Junior Grand Prix, so she's pretty stressed about it. And I try to bring it to her as just getting experience that we didn't expect really something from her beside uh, to uh, enjoy this experience. And on the other side, we have uh, Francois Pito from France that is trying to go to the final, Junior Grand Prix final. So he got second to his first Junior Grand Prix in Bangkok. And now here he is going to try uh, to get on the podium to be able to participate at the Junior Grand Prix final. And with him, it's an approach where it's more about confidence and trust in himself and just to show one more time what he does at practice and not to do more because he's the kind of skater that wants to try the day of the competition to show more. And try when you do everything to relax, go deep in your knee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're a little bit stiff, that's why I relax. Just enjoy the moment, okay? Yeah, no, I cannot enjoy it, I'm too nervous. <laughs> and pick up. You can go for triple. Okay, good job, Evgenia. Proud of you. Really well handled. Yeah. I want to have this. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone, to Budapest, Hungary. Day one of competition, the Paris Short Program, group number three, taking to the ice. Mark, did you have a nice break? Did you have a cup of, a cup of tea? Um, I did, actually. We have um, had some work being done in the kitchen. So I was just chatting to some okay. uh, the very nice guys. Well, no, just some uh, updates, developments. Um, you mean corrections? <laughs> yeah, little uh, snacks. Shall we say? Corrections? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I got it, I got it. So you got yourself a cuppa? No, I didn't. I didn't. So there's been no caffeine consumption, Ted, in this. Uh, actually, for so you, for you, that's good. Okay, you my already have bags. Might be less, <laughs> less hyperactive. Do you, do you, are, do you like? You have um, energy all the way through the day until your battery's just gone, and then you shut down and fall asleep. So what happens? Uh, I tend to be so excited and. So like this morning, I was excited about today, so I got up at half past four, worked out, did some meditation, prepped a little bit more. I'll be like this till the you, end of the day, and then lights just go off. You worked out and did meditation before yeah. this? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're impressive. How long do you think you're going to be able to do this for? Um, oh, forever age is a state of mind, isn't it? I was watching a, a fascinating <laughs> thing about uh, centenarians. Hey, I can tell you that's true. It is. Okay. okay. Okay, so forever I'll be forever working out and meditating Good and for being. You. Well, Good for he you. says that now. <laughs> no, yeah, you'll shift a little bit, but still, a, a busy person and active person will be that way in life. You just might slow down from the workout and lifting weights and running to probably, <laughs> you know, walking slowly on the seawall. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it says you, the man that worked there. You did like. Two events last week, work through the night, so no, your energy levels no, are quite I know, inspiring. but my workout is walking slowly on the seawall oh, okay. <laughs> and, okay. having, and having a glass of wine at the outdoor cafe on the beach. I mean, that's that's okay. that's my workout. No, I do more than that, but I used to play at a little hockey a lot, so used ah, to. Cool. Yeah, I enjoyed that. So yeah. next week, when we're uni reunited in Gdansk and then Jarvan, so we'll have to. Um, Find some common ground. I'll, I'll make you work out one morning and then we can drink wine at night. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be, yeah, the wine thing is okay. <laughs> That's acceptable. <laughs> the workout might be walking to the rink. But the workout is in that rink because that is the coldest rink. It's not the coldest. The coldest rink on the Junior Grand Prix is Riga. Second coldest is this practice rink here. And the third coldest is um, Gdansk because they don't have any heat in the building in any one of the rooms. And so it doesn't matter where you go, each one of the rooms is not heated. So, you know, it's it's a rink. And if you're there for 12 hours, it gets cold. I mean, it's not freezing cold, but it gets cold. But well, I have a plan for, for you and I, Ted. I am going to come equipped with a heated vest for us both. Really? So I am, I am prepped and ready. Well, I've not actually packed up the suitcase, but... Um, okay, you might I'll be my hero if you do that. Yeah, but... I, I, well, I'm, I, Need to set an alarm just to make sure I pack two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw that when you were there last time. That's great. That's fantastic. But I don't know if we'll be in the same room, probably. But we got our routine. We talk and we walk over and get our hot tea. Talk to the skaters and the coaches and come back. Yeah. I, I really, really looking forward to next week. Really excited and hopefully the athletes and the coaches and the skaters will all continue to share their stories. And that is the segue. The segue, Ted, to just reignite that open forum. There is an open forum here, please, not only to the skaters to share their stories, but to I the fans to ask us questions. I don't know if people, if maybe nobody's watching or <laughs> they we've answered all their questions or they just don't care or we don't, you know what, you know, we need some <laughs> input, some questions, some, you know, some content. Otherwise, you're well, just going to hear, uh, hear us jabber on. That can't be very uh, interesting. Endless. I did get a question again from Brian on Instagram directed to me. He was asking about levels for steps and the choreo sequences are defined. So the easy one is the choreo sequence insofar as for that you need to see two significant skating movements. You won't see the choreo sequence in a short program, but we'll see that in the free skate for the pairs and the men's and women's singles. And that's two clearly defined skating movements, so spirals or spread eagles or hydroglides. The step sequence, that's got the level criteria and four different um, 
levels to be attained and the most important one is the number of cleanly attained turns so from a minimum variety variety complexity yeah it's difficult when you use the, not you but anybody uses the term skating movements they're going well what is that okay then you go through the yeah. list well spread eagle spiral then they go yeah but what is that right so it's like having yeah a, it's yeah like having a child why 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it's it's difficult to go down that rabbit hole and explain everything True but first. anyways well done on that and it's you know we talk we reference that step sequence level and I think that's it is quite it is quite ex no I don't think exciting is maybe the right choice of adjective it's quite interesting to see who will get that coveted level four and that is so much down to complexity getting the cleanly called number of turns and that marries hand in hand with good skating skill oh no question if you get a level four in step sequences most likely your skating skills in the PC scores are going to be a little bit higher as well because that doesn't just happen in the step sequence. You know, it happens throughout the program. But having said that, you know, there are some skaters that are just excellent at having their, the last element as the step sequence to a powerful piece of music and they go berserk. And it looks really great, yeah. but they don't carry that all the way through the program. So, And there is our Canadian crowd hmm. team. Yay! <laughs> great. We don't have the American one, so I mean, we're winning this one. I don't know where they are. Yeah, clear front runners here. Front runners here. That's it. We'll see, but uh, no. Gdansk was the big one last year. Last year. Remember that? The that was a, a battle royale. That was a battle, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll, we'll be on site to <laughs> cheerlead for them all. Okay, you can wear the American ears <laughs> and I'll wear the Canadian ears. <laughs> all, right. all right, here we go. I'll be Team World. <laughs> Talk, talking about Canada. Our first team does come from Canada. 15-year-old Eva Kemp and 19-year-old Jonathan, Eli Jonathan Elizarov. He was born in Israel. She was born in Winnipeg. Coached by Andrew Evans, Kevin Daw, 55.88 personal best of the World Junior Championships last season in Calgary. And we'll skate to music from Cirque du Soleil.
Canada's Eva Kemp and Jonathan Eliza Robin. I'm sure Ted, you know the story, but it's fascinating that two days after Junior Worlds, Jonathan's lung collapsed from a spontaneous pneumothorax and he had lung surgery a month later. Back on the ice slowly in May and now just getting back up to the level that they were at last year, which took them to World Junior sixth place. But a real amazing story of you know, tenacity from, from young humans. Yeah, and you know, there's a number of stories like that we never really hear about. Here's the double axle. This was a bit of a problem for Eva. Looked good in the air, just under rotated a little bit, caught the free leg stuck down on the landing foot. Now this was supposed to be a throw triple loop, opened it up into a double, a nice one, and good positive GOE on that. But still, the double. Here's the group three lift, good pick up. Good ice coverage by Jonathan, carrying that flow throughout all the turns, so important for the man. The woman has to stay absolutely still, cannot be moving around up top, other than to change the position, of course. Here's the before the inside desk part, there's the anchor, and there's one revolution, and two, and that is in the level two. So didn't get the entrance, but two revolutions in the desk bar position. Uh, interesting. Uh, See how they think about this, how they feel about it. Go ahead, Mark. Well, they, they did articulate it, given the you know the mega challenges that Jonathan has had and the impact on the team, that there weren't objectives about getting back to the junior grump or trying to get the junior grumpy final. Just mindful of the fact that you know they are united as a team, both on the same page, both committed. And you know, testament to Ava too. Jonathan's had the horrible illness to contend with and surgery. But testament to Ava and Coach Andrew and Kevin for supporting the team to get prepared to come back this year. You know, others might have just high and dry cut off and said, right, Ava saying I'm going to pursue my singles or pursue another partnership. So, you know, you really unite the bond between coaches and skaters. Oh, you have to be. I mean, it doesn't work if you're not. It's like any team. It doesn't matter how many stars you got on your team. If you're not united, it's a disaster. You have to be working the same and you support when your partner's down and you celebrate when you're both up, and that's what it is in life, with families, and in any team sport and event, and it's sometimes challenging to get through that because you think of yourself. Generally, you're always better off thinking about other people first, see what you can do to help. The scores for Eva and Jonathan, 44.24, and that will put them currently into fourth place. And of course, that double axe was a bit of a miss, and that was the cost, but it is close. That's really close. So there's still room, depending on what happens to the next teams in the short program. Marina Napolitano and Eduardo Comi from Italy, 15 and 17 years old. Coached by Christine Mori.
High 10 for Arina Napolitano and Eduardo Comi. And Italian pair skating just seems to be going from strength to strength. And this junior pair, new to the Junior Grand Prix, she's competed internationally before, but new here as a team. And I just think it's amazing to see this emergence of Italian pair skaters. Well, I'd be interested to know how they're actually matching them up. Are they approaching these single skaters and saying, we'd like you to try this? Is it something they're discovering them by themselves? How is that exactly working? And uh, as we see the twist in here, this is the level two, so gets, I guess, the split. Catch, here's the throw double loop. That was well done. Nice, right into a spread eagle. And here's the hoop three. There's the hand to hip, change of position, change of hold. Change of position by her as well. This is in at a level three, so missing one of the four features. bit of a minus GOE, but here are the double axles. Watch her, she just gets that free leg out. Does a good job. And under rotated for her on that in the judging system, but still good mechanics. Forward inside desk barrel, level three. So there's one, there's two, and must have the feature coming in as well. So a nice job, good looking team. What's exciting, Ted, is we talk a lot about the the training in Bergamo, the ISU Centre of Excellence, but here this team, they train in Milan, they're based in Milan, where, Milan, where the 2018 World Championships were held with their coach, Cristina Mauri, who has coached the Italian senior champions. It's great to know that it's not just one hub, it's not just one location, but Italian pair skating being developed uh, and honed in more than one location, which really suggests that they're very strong for the future. Yeah, they have a bit of a movement happening in Italy, both in pairs and dance, and also in singles, of course, they have some history there. They've done a really good job. Short program scores for Arena and Eduardo, 44.45. That'll put them currently into fourth place. There is a look at your top five teams so far in this event. Six more to come. And there's our next team. They represent Georgia, 18-year-old Anastasia Natokina and 20-year-old Luka Barulova. First Junior Grand Prix season together. They took the title in Istanbul, 15 points toward the Junior Grand Prix final. They'll want to do that here. 67.92 personal best in the short as they skate to summertime.
Anastasia, Metalkina, and Luca Berlava. The Georgian team and Ted when I spoke with them after their win at the first Junior Grand Prix assignment they had in Istanbul. I said, obviously, you know, you're a new team. And they explained they'd been together for three months. And it was just scarcely credible to my brain space that they could achieve what they have in that space of time. But perhaps, you know, he's been skating for 18 years. She's been skating for 14 years. They have been honed by so many coaches in an obvious education that's made them the quality that they have for, you know, decades. Yeah, and both teams are both teams with other partners were very good as well. So they're picking up kind of where they left off, but this is just a great match. Match made in heaven, you can see that. Let's take a look. Watch the split of the twist here. There's the split. Hands go down to the side, and a nice easy catch. It's level three, so three out of the four features. Here's the double axle, no problem at all on this. Nicely matched. And I took some of this moves because this yeah, is a, not unusual, but you know, for the junior teams, they don't quite have the confidence yet to do that because they're still focused so much on skills and it's a hard discipline. So to have a little dance stuff in there as well, watch this triple loop. Watch her check the free leg out right now. Lifts up, pushes back, stabilizes the landing. Just beautiful if you do that early enough. There's that group. Watch this lift. This goes up one, no hand is called. It was one hand on the hip. Change of position, change of hold. And a difficult dismount. It's a level four, level three. And this, this is the inside desk bar. This is level four, so difficult entry. He does actually three revolutions down in that desk bar position. That's unusual. We've only seen two to this point. That was three plus difficult entry, level four. Beautifully done. Yes, and even as you caught those dance movements, Ted, you could see as Luca moved his arm back, there was a Latin stylization that I thought they've obviously had work off the ice with Latin teachers as well. So much present to that level of quality. Yeah, no question. Well, season's best, 69.94 for Anastasia and Luca. And of course, that easily moves them into first place. So we take a look at the top five teams. They have a 14 point lead at this point in the competition. They will be punching their ticket to Beijing, I'm most certain. Mm. Next. Our next team represents China. 16 year old Yixi Yang, 19 year old Chung Yang Deng. 47.19, personal best. They were 10th at the World Juniors last year in Calgary. They started out as gymnastics, in gymnastics, and then switched to figure skating. No skate to Spring Blossom.
Well, I think we just need to take a moment to talk about the entry into the death spiral for Yiji Yang and Shun Yang Deng. That was wonderful sliding movement. Left entry into the death spiral for this Chinese team who were 10th at last year's yeah. World Junior Championships as the Chinese man. Just, cheers from just uh, level three at the moment, but it's being reviewed. So I, you know, I saw level four, but oh, I don't we'll see. There's a twist. Okay, so that's just a level two. Now let's see what happens. This is single lutz. Is that you have the sheet double lutz? But you can see that was absolutely oh, yeah. intentional. If you single, you throw double loop. Throw chip at this point. That was intentional as well. There's look at that one arm. That lifted with one arm only. He didn't use the left hand at all. He lifted with the right arm. This is in level four with three left, so so well done. So some elements absolutely at a high, high level. We look at that difficult entry right into the death spiral be interested to see if they change this to a level four, but it's under review. Uh, again, so interesting to see the focus of the teams that entry into the throw loop. That was difficult and complex. I've raved about the entry into the death spiral. Lift really strong as well. So you can see the time devotion and priority as their coach supports them in the kiss and cry. But obviously the side by side jump and pass, the throw, maybe not something that they're as comfortable with at present. Yeah, I think they've taken a look at the skills that they currently have, make sure that they do what they do, what they can do well, even if it's more simple at this point, they'll add the difficulty. Clearly, this team will be able to do all those difficult elements, but they just may not have the comfort or confidence at this point. Still looking at the Ford in de inside desk bar, still under review. Everything else has been cleared up. But they are now going back to the combo stand, and Moving around. Check things out. But you look at some of these elements, Mark, it's like, whoa, when this team does the, the triple toe loops or the side-by-side -side double axles and the throw triple loop, a significantly different score. Yes. Personal best is 47.19. Interesting to think of the the approach from Chinese pair skating, obviously we've seen quite literally the full gamut of results from Benyao in the 80s, then to Olympic success. And now it seems like, again, a new set of coaches. We've seen a few Chinese pair teams on the circuit, new coaches, new approach, uh, and new teams emerging. So it'll be interesting to see and exciting to see how they fit now in this next generation. Oh, absolutely. And we've talked teams. about seeing some strong single skaters as well. So. China's back on the Junior Grand Prix. We're starting to see the next generation come up more fully than we did during COVID, of course, because we really didn't see them or the Japanese teams during uh, the first year of COVID. Not the first year, the second year of COVID. The first year we did the Junior Grand Prix under those circumstances. So everything has now been cleared up. The forward inside oh. desk bar did go to There the you go. <laughs> I had a good eye on that one. Yeah, All you right. did. <laughs> Well, 40.34 for Yixi Yang and Shen Yang Deng from China. That'll put them currently in eighth place. They're just a couple elements shy of challenging for the podium. That will come in time. Well, the final four teams take the ice for their six minute warm up. Looks like a, a really bright rink. It looks like, I love seeing the flags and, and how bright and, and big. It does seem like it's a very lofty arena, big high ceiling. And it probably makes it more exciting, especially for the skaters that haven't competed on the Junior Grand Prix to feel like they're in an arena venue performing and competing. Well, it's, they're very steep seats. You don't want to, you want to be okay. very careful walking down and up them, uh, up the seats. And of course the rink is separated. So there are no seats down by the boards. Um, yeah, but it's a beautiful rink and uh, very bright and a little chilly, but that's okay. <laughs> These guys don't mind it too much. It's that, that fine balance because some of the rinks on occasion can be almost too warm. I've seen some yeah. of the skaters 
Maybe when it's more likely, perhaps if they're a senior event where it's televised and there's a big arena, but I've seen sometimes the skaters lamenting when it can be so hot. They're obviously doing something so physical and warm. Yeah, exactly. But then if the temperature in the arena is too hot, it can be a bit, a bit sticky. But no, yeah, they don't like that at all. But the other <laughs> rink, you know, that's just too cold. You couldn't get warm in that rink if you tried. But, <laughs> but you know, that's many rinks across the world are like that. They're just cold. Mm -hmm. They don't have any artificial heating in there. A lot of our rings oh, gosh. in Canada have frost on the walls <laughs> during the winter. <laughs> I remember training in rinks where you could be warm bodily because you're doing your run-throughs and you're training hard, but your fingertips are, yeah. would feel just so, so cold and that inability to comprehend how I can be sweating, but seemingly freezing at the same time. I used to run my program in a ski jacket because that rink was so wow. cold. A five-minute program in <laughs> a ski jacket. Both things were yeah. horrible. Program was horrible. <laughs> my fashion was horrible. Everything was horrible. <laughs> but I did what I was told, so. Yeah, that's a good student. It's, it's interesting to just to think of all the skaters. So we have, you know, 14 teams in this event, 28 young humans, 21 years old or younger, this generation that is so consumed by maybe social media or devices, and yet these young humans will have had to spend so much time completely off their devices. They will have had to focus so much on their training, and I think in, in the world that we're in, where you know TikTok and Instagram you know, consume the lives of so many youngsters. I think it's really good for the humans to find, have found something that consumes their focus and gets them to be so physically fit and healthy. I think more balance, perhaps more so than yeah, balance. Perhaps more so than any other time, as, as we get more and more into a culture that is head down on a phone, that becomes more pertinent now than maybe 10, 20 years ago for the junior grand prix. I mean, I know that these skaters will have their head down on their phone when they get off <laughs> off the ice, and you know that's of fine. Course. But they have to train so much; they they're not in the phone as often as as many students would be if they don't have another activity mm. in life. So, um, but yeah, no, having a good balance of physical activity so important. Mm. So we're talking about your workouts and your dance, <laughs> your dance routine. Do you know who your partner is yet? Uh, no, but I know where I'll be based. I don't think I'm allowed to say any of that, so I better be careful in case there's anybody from the UK listening. Yeah, I don't think they'll be listening, but that's okay. Uh, no. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Mark is in Dancing on Ice in Great Britain, so it's a TV show. Uh, Torval and Dean, I think. Do they? Yeah, Torval and Dean, Torval, yeah, Olympic yeah. champions. And how many years have you done that for 10 years? Well, this will be my 11th year in the show. And I think this show has been running for 16 years, but I joined the year after I retired from competition, so it would be my 11th year. Oh, well, you are a good teammate there. And you, and, uh, well, but it's, I, celebrities are not just singing or, or, or you know, musicians, but it's also uh, corporate celebrities as well, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've partnered novice skaters that have been politicians or members of the House of Lords in London. I have worked with successful businesswomen, reality TV stars, Paralympians. I skated with one lady who was registered blind. Yeah. And so she was to learn to skate and perform on t live television despite being registered blind. Wow. So it's an amazing insight into different walks of life. It really is. That's quite something. You're, you're a good person, so I know you would help and support all those people and and uh, well, 11 years, you must be, must be doing something right. <laughs> well, I, I suppose what that does, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, if you're watching this Junior Grand Prix, your respect for skating and your education of skating is high. I wouldn't suggest you watch that TV show for <laughs> <laughs> any skater quality, but good life experience. And also what it does is it helps make you appreciate what these guys do. Because when you see people that are new to the sport trying to perform in a matter of months, your respect for this Group 3 lift is definitely heightened. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this level, you don't realize, we're watching this and you go, oh, that's a bit shaky. You don't realize how difficult mm. these things are and risky. And uh, But you only realize that when you see, you know, someone who's just starting out. Mm. Yeah. Or, 
you know, when we watch the, the trailer for the World Ice Skating Day, the initiative of the International Skating Union, and you see the little clips of the beginners, and you think, oh gosh, everybody that we're getting to enjoy now is not a beginner. They have poured a life into Abs the ice. Absolutely. Well, here we go, final group in the pairs short program. Up next after this will be the women's short. But we have four more teams to come. Our first team represents France, Romain Telemach and Lucas Cullen. She's 13, just 13 years old. He is 17, first junior Grand Prix season. Second event, they were fourth and just off the podium in Linz. 43.46, their personal best in that competition, and they'll skate to Smile and Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. The French team of Romain Telemat and Lucas Coulon. And I just remember Ted seeing the joy in their faces when they realized the result that they achieved in their first assignment in Linz three weeks ago. Three weeks since then, doesn't look like they've changed anything technically since that last event, just trying to push perhaps the grades of execution and the program component scores. Well, we'll see what the scores come in. Their 43.46 is their seasons and personal best, of course. And as you mentioned, pretty much the same here. Let's take a look. There's the twist. And that is a double twist with a level one. Here's the double lutz. This is well done. No problem. Here's the throw double loop. He removes himself, passes her through. A little bit too far forward on the landing. Keeps her hands off the ice. That was good. And the group three left really nice. Good position. Good flow throughout, lovely position up top. Nice smooth turns across the ice. 
change of hold and position. This is in the level four, so all four featured. We're there. Ford inside Desparl. This is in at a level three, so no difficult entry or maybe the entry in two re revolutions. Sorry, I didn't see that. Yeah, so we'll see where this ends up. I, I, you know, if, if no improvement, just being able to come out again, you know, she only 13 years old, just coming out again three weeks later, experiencing the joy of that first event where they represented themselves so well, just in fourth place, just off the podium, and then coming back here and managing to peak again to deliver another clean skate. And, you know, it looks like the score will be similar to what it was last time, but in itself, consistency, although it's not an exciting buzzword, it's not something that all have amassed comfortably. You know, that in itself is quite a clue to have a consistency in performance under pressure. Yeah, so important, of course. You have to be able to deliver what you're capable of. And here we'll take a look at the scores on a consistent basis. It'll get a little more challenging as the elements get more difficult. 41.91, that is eight in the short program. So they're just a little shy, a couple points shy of their season's best. But getting out here on the Junior Grand Prix twice this season, they will have learned a lot. They don't know that yet. They'll know that a little bit later on in the year. These performances will have given them some information, some data, if you will, that they didn't have before. Our next team represents Germany. 15-year-old Alaya Ackermann and 21-year-old Tobias Harms. Coached by Florian Just, 40.96, their personal best with a 36.79, their season's best running that in Linz. And they'll skate the short program to Mac the Knife.
we sincerely hope that Alaya Ackerman and Tobias Arms from Germany are okay after that really challenging fall on the group three lift and what that fall just showcases in the way in which they conduct themselves after it. It's how incredibly tough, resilient and strong these young people are. Yeah, it's amazing. They got up right away and didn't look any worse for wear. We'll take a look at that as we see the throw double loop. Here's the lift, we'll take a look and see. He did a very good job to try to save as much as he could, but he caught his edge, I think. Oh, right there, he just sighed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was good, she caught, I mean, not good, and he, she fell on him. On him. So, yeah, so her head was far from the ice, fell on him, he absorbed most of that, which is what yeah. they're taught to do, not that, that he intentionally did that, but they're taught to get underneath the woman and support that, yeah, cushion them exactly. So, well done for that. Mm -hmm. It's a more of a shock than anything. Mm. And it's a real shame because this was a team, their coach Florian was explaining that they've somewhat benefited from the, the communication 2575 with the age requirements so that they could continue this season. With an age harmonization, they weren't going to miss out on being ineligible. And so they weren't quite sure if they're going to continue this season. And they've said that they've worked incredibly hard since their first event to this event. And Florian, their coach, who joins them now, was just saying he hoped that that hard work between Lintz and this would be able to be paid off. And you know what? It, of course, that wasn't a great skate. But their teamwork and their resilience is more than great. Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of the discussion we've always had is the challenge, whether it's a nice dance or in synchro or in pair skating, that team events requires the support of each other. Mistakes are going to be made by one or the other or both, but keeping together, keeping the support system in place, so important as they move into the future. And brings value to the team because you know your partner's there for you. Yeah. Little shock, no question. 33.40 for Laya and Tobiah from Germany, that's 11th in the short program, and we'll be upset with that, but they're safe. It looks like they're okay after that fall. Hopefully we'll see them in the free program. There is a look at our next team that represent Uzbekistan, 16-year-old Anastasia Zazanova, and 20-year-old Jashmeet Kashpum Abedim. It's a difficult name. Uh, and they have a top score, just 35.08 from last season. The skate, you are the reason.
the team of Anastasia Sasanova and Jamshid Tashmu Kamedeov. And judgment was explaining to me that Anastasia had two, a surgery two months ago and so they lost a lot of training time in preparation for this event. And indeed, he said that where they train in Uzbekistan, sometimes there's no ice at all, lots of restrictions to their training time. So for them to come here now and complete this short program, major testament. Yeah, and in some ways, this is training. You know, it is competition yeah. still, but they get here, they have practice ice. As we see the throw double loop, pushes the blade back really nice and solid. And here's that difficult entry into the group three left. And you can see pretty slow, a little wobbly, yeah. and very smart, bringing it down. It was getting out of control. Just bring it down, take the hit on that, be safe. And, you know, for those teams that, uh, Mark, that don't get a lot of training, coming to a competition like this, uh, practicing with your colleagues and your competitors and, and then competing gives you some time to practice and test that in competition. Yeah, and just exactly as you Ted said, Ted, for Jamshid to be able to not let, you know, the competitive juices, the testosterone and the adrenaline to try and compete successfully override they need to keep Anastasia safe. And he didn't, and that's so important. Absolutely. We've talked often about one of the first skills that the coaches teach young teams, or any team, is about safety. What do I do when the lift comes down? I move over there, get underneath the woman, and absorb the fall, and or bring it down if you feel that you've lost control. And you can clearly see that on display here. Short program scores for Anastasia and Just Mead, 34.07, and that'll put them currently into 11th place. Our final team in this competition represents Slovakia. 15 year old Nikolai Sitkova and 18 year old Oliver. Kubasek. This is their first Junior Grand Prix season event. So they'll be looking, they'll be getting their first personal best score on the Junior Grand Prix. As they'll skate the short to Born Alone and Die Alone.
the Slovakian team, Nikola Sitkova and Oliver Kubacak, team that started to skate together just last year. This is their first international competition. They round out the end of the 14 teams that have completed the pair shot program. And it's so interesting, Mark, to see young teams that, you know, have only been together for a short period of time. They're learning the individual pair skills. But what you see is when they're skating side by side, they're, they're still looking for each other. They're not quite comfortable just knowing where each other are at all times. And that simply takes time. If you skate beside someone that long, you'll know exactly where they are. There's the double axles in a, a queue. There's the twist. Good split. A little over rotation on that. A double twist in the level two. There's the group three left. This is three features, so change of position, change of hold. And there's the throw double loop. And just that go, like, it was there. It's just, but so we rotated a little bit and just collapsed. Nicola, as we see the forward inside Despera, she had no pairs experience at all before teaming up with Oliver, so she knew to it. And they train in Zelina. She's moved from the Czech Republic to train with Oliver and their coaches, Rastislav and Petra Vriak. So, again, further confirmation of the huge life commitment that's made by the families, and, and arguably more Nicola because she's been the one that's had to relocate to pursue this dream of being a pair skater. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, when you follow your dreams, they have consequences in regards to, well, consequences is too strong of a word, I suppose, but sacrifices, I guess that's better. Yeah. Uh, but list of sacrifices that many people would not make. Uh, but on the other, on the flip side, the good side is you're following a beautiful dream that you have. And yeah. no matter where that takes you, no matter how hard it is, whether you even reach that dream or not, there is a lot gained along the way. Yeah, and, you know, finding yourself, like, Oliver looks maybe a little frustrated. He's had more experience, but they're representing Slovakia. They're the only pair team in Slovakia. 35.91 for the short program. That'll put them currently in 10th place. And we'll see the final standings after the short program for pairs. 14 teams. Second event, the men's event finished a little earlier today as we take a look at the final results. Anastasia and Luca, just wonderful. Violetta and Ivan, Martina and Charlie. Three teams so far in this event. Free program to come. Up next will be the women's short program starting local time here in Budapest at 17.15. So make sure you join us for that. For all of us here at the ISU and for Mark Henry, I'm Ted Barton. Thank you for watching. We'll see you shortly.